Hey guys, this is Brian. And this is Luca. And this is Brian. From How Radiology Works. And today we're doing the line focus principle for x-ray radiography. You're gonna learn about how electrons get transferred to x-rays and what the impact of the target angle is. This is Bryce and we're gonna show you the pieces of the x-ray tube, how they impact the line focus principle. So there's our, our x-ray cathode or our focal spot from which the electrons are boiled off. So you can see that electron beam now has a certain width and that width is determined by the size of the focal spot. That electron beam is then rammed hard into our x-ray anode. The electrons will penetrate that heavy metal anode and then some interactions of Bremsstrahlung and characteristic interactions will occur and then our x-ray beam will come down. And we're showing you here the characteristic width. If you're a patient in this scenario, the patient's gonna be down here, and the width of the x-ray beam and how it's related to the width of that electron beam. It actually has to do with that target angle. So you see the angle theta there at the top of the x-ray beam is actually a characteristic of our x-ray tube. So in this case, we have a relatively large target angle and the electron width of the electron beam is similar to the width of the x-ray beam. Okay, now we're gonna compare that relatively large target angle to a small target angle case. So you can see, here's the electron beam coming out of the cathode. You can see the cathode or the actual focal spot size is actually staying the same size. Then our electron beam now is ramming into an x-ray tube with a small target angle. And for you can see now the width of our x-ray beam is much smaller. So the amount of energy that we get to deposit on the anode is actually the same here because the width of our electron beam is the same but because we have a smaller target angle now the effective spot size that the patient will see is significantly smaller to get as much x-ray flux as we can in a short amount of time so the idea is we have electrons coming in and if the width of the electrons here can be larger than the width of the x-rays here, what we call the actual focal spot on the anode, can be bigger than what we call the effective focal spot of the size of the x-rays coming out. Then if we quantify that, the x-ray tube has a target angle, like we show here. The same picture on the last slide, I just took away the electron beam picture coming in, the x-ray beam picture coming out, but it's the same triangle right here. And if we remember, right here is that actual focal spot where the electrons are hitting. Right here is the effective focal spot where the x-rays are coming out. And if we remember from our high school math class, the definition for these right triangles here, the definition of the sine, if you're at this angle here, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of this angle here is the effective focal spot divided by the actual focal spot. So if we want to solve for the effective focal spot, we just bring this actual focal spot up here. So we have the effective focal spot equals sine of theta times the actual spot. So what does that mean in practice? The actual angles here are typically small such that we can take good advantage of this effect. And so in practice, the tube angles are typically between six and 20 degrees for an x-ray tube. So the sine of theta, if you did in radians, that theta is very similar to sine of theta but you can also just type in sine of theta in your calculator if you're doing it in degrees. The sine of theta is between 0.1 and 0.34. So 
what that's saying here is that depending on how steep this is, the smallest case would be 0.1 smaller. So basically it would be one tenth the size. The effective focal spot would be one tenth of the actual focal spot. And then on the other side, it's about one third this, the size. Again, in this dimension, it'd be one third the size. We also talk about that in terms of the load gain. So the loading gain means we're able to deposit more energy without melting the x-ray tube. The same exact equation, it's just we're solving for a different variable here. So the loading gain is actually saying the actual spot divided by the effective spot. So how much does this line focus principle bias in this case? It's one over sine of theta. So again, the same triangle here applies. And if we look at what we said on the last page, that sine of theta varied from 0.1 to 0.34, then one over sine of theta is going to vary from one over 0.34, which is about three, to one over 0.1, which is about 10. So what this is saying is that line focus principle actually gets us between a factor of three and a factor of 10, depending on the target angle itself. And one downside or one negative effect of having very shallow angles is something called the heel effect or the anode heel effect. And that gets worse at smaller angles because you can see here, as this is steeper, the x-rays coming out of this region are gonna be traveling through more of the material than the x-rays coming out through this region here. We have a separate video talking about that heel effect.